In recent years, the social justice movement has taken on many of the qualities of a cult. Cultish behaviour stifles conversation, drives wedges between people and causes conflict where none is necessary. Vocal advocates for social justice often call anyone who disagrees with them bigoted and dismiss anything they have to say out of hand. The fanatics of the group are also prone to viciously attack anyone they see as an enemy of progress. This is very unhelpful and presents the movement in a very negative way. Social justice has an attitude problem. The most vocal advocates speak of educating others, but do not acknowledge that they too are imperfect learning people. There is a pervasive sense that advocates of this ideology are the only ones who should be listened to on any subject, that they are right about everything, even if reason and evidence disagree. When challenged, they usually will not state on what they base their positions, instead saying, it's not up to me to educate you, or Google is free. This attitude creates a blindness to real problems. For example, the many crimes and atrocities perpetrated in the name of religion, particularly Islam in recent decades, are ignored for fear of offending anyone. Hurting someone's delicate feelings is considered by many to be equal to actual physical violence. The same attitude pervades in discussions of entertainment. Video games, films, TV series, online entertainment, and even art like paintings have all been influenced by the toxic approach of the social justice movement. Critics have made careers out of applying social justice perspectives to entertainment, causing much controversy. Just as everywhere else, dividing fans of these things by race, sex, privilege, or any other aspect of their identity only serves to drive people apart and make everyone more prejudiced. Let's examine how closely social justice resembles a cult. For this video, I will use the cult checklist created by Professor Eileen Barker. 1. A movement that separates itself from society, either geographically or socially. The social justice movement does this through the use of safe spaces, where no dissenting views are allowed to be spoken. This is particularly noticeable in academic institutions, where safe spaces and language policing have taken the place of progress and learning. So-called social justice courses have become common, although they present few career opportunities to those who take them. Students are often encouraged sometimes by the staff who teach them, to ignore or silence all dissenting views and fall victim to confirmation bias. 2. Adherents who become increasingly dependent on the movement for their view on reality. Adherents to social justice, often calling themselves social justice warriors, are completely dependent on the ideology for their worldview, framing everything through its narrative. Everything is about group identities and level of oppression. Social justice has become a divisive ideology, obsessed with gender, racial, cultural or any other identity that frames people as part of a demographic rather than as an individual. A person speaking on a subject is no longer just that, a person. That person would now be a cis, heteronormative, white male oppressor or a trans, non-binary black activist. This group focus increases divides and promotes racism and sexism. It has also led to what some have called the Oppression Olympics, where everyone is constantly in competition for who is the most oppressed, or fights the hardest for the minority of the week, or keeps best track of what specific word is now offensive, or has most brutally put down a white male oppressor recently. 3. Important decisions in the lives of the adherents are made by others. This is indirectly achieved by threatening tactics and ostracising anyone who makes the wrong decision. Adherents who go against the group are instantly thrown to the metaphorical wolves, receiving often far worse attacks than those the group opposes. The way this is performed is strikingly similar to how Scientology attacks its detractors though often over social media. Let's compare this yes. 
I'm here. Tell, what, what are your crimes against uh, yeah, not only Scientology, but uh, what are your crimes against humanity? I'd like to know. I called Hubbard a lunatic charlatan. Oh, I, I, I want to know what your crimes are against well, that's humanity. My only crime. That's are you, I, crime. I bet you you're into dope, or are you into what little crimes boy? Have you committed? I, you're into little boy. What crimes right? have you committed? You drugs, you're dr dealing drugs? You a drug dealer? What crimes have you committed? With this. Do you really actually genuinely need to become friends with white supremacists, anti-Semites, homophobes, transphobes, misogynists, ableists, and so on and so forth? Um, why are you still pretending to be a feminist? I mean, you're fucking not. In any realistic sense whatsoever, you know, I mean... You've done nothing but pander to these fucking scumbags now for, what, a couple of months or whatever? And given your, the answers you've given on Twitter and your Ask FM and all of that, you're not a fucking feminist anymore. Stop lying. It's ridiculous. Uh, you know, she's inconsistent. She hangs out with racists. That, that's all I need to say. I don't, you know, you do, well, I'll prove the racist. Fuck you. Uh, this is a message simply to Lacey Green, who's been going off on... Twitter earlier today. Uh, this is really, this is all I've got to say to, to you. Lacey, shut up. Four, making sharp distinctions between us and them, divine and satanic, good and evil, etc., that are not open for discussion. The movement has adopted call out culture as a form of thought policing. Any dissenting viewpoint is shouted down as bigoted and harmful. This is particularly prevalent on social media, where personal attacks and social ostracism take the place of debate. This doesn't only take place online. So-called progressives have dug up personal information and attempted to have people removed from their jobs, sent intimidating messages, and even threatened the life and families of those they disagree with, all in the name of social justice. 5. Leaders who claim divine authority for their deeds and for their orders to their followers. This is the only area that is not directly applicable. Social justice is a largely non-religious movement and claims no divine knowledge. That being said, the strongest advocates do claim that they are above the bigots they oppose, often with the same fervour of religious preachers. 6. Leaders and movements who are unequivocally focused on achieving a certain goal. As with any ideological group, the social justice movement's actions are deeply rooted in a desire to achieve their goals. While their goals are often laudable, a better, more inclusive and understanding world, the way they go about pursuing them is not. A divisive, reactionary attitude and cliquish, abrasive purging of dissenters is leaving a trail of disenchanted former allies in the movement's wake. If they could discuss their problems, for example their trivialization of rape or blindness towards oppressive regimes without screaming, I'm offended, or calling everyone a Nazi, their ideas could be discussed openly and critically without name-calling and tantrums, the movement could achieve a great deal of good in the world.